guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm filming a physical book haul. Recently I filmed a Kindle ebook haul, which I will leave linked if you wanna go check that out. And I said I will be filming my physical book haul. And this is that. These are obviously going to be 99% horror and thriller books. Duh. Obviously, what do you think this is? A romance channel? Because it's not. It is, however, Valentine's Day today, so I'm wearing my um, books sweatshirt and red lipstick. If you're interested where I got this sweatshirt, it's from Inkwell Threads, I believe. I'll leave it linked. I got it like a year ago, and I love it. I'm obsessed. So we're just going to get right into the haul. Should I start with horror or should I start with thriller? Let's start with thriller because last time I started with horror. Let's start with my recent book of the month picks. I pretty much always get the thriller pick from book of the month. Um, it's rare that I pick something else in some months if the thriller pick isn't something that I want and I don't like any of the other ones, I'll just skip that month. Um, or if it's something that I read or whatever. So in January, I can't remember if I hauled this or not. I don't think I did. Um, in January, my pick was A Flicker in the Dark by Stacey Willingham. I still have yet to read this. I know like everyone freaking read this book already and I have not. So this was my January pick. I've heard very mixed reviews. So I'm looking forward to seeing where I stand with this one. So this is about a woman where when she was younger, a bunch of girls went missing and I believe they might've been murdered and her father confessed to the crimes. And now years and years later, she's like a psychiatrist and the same thing is happening where all these girls are going missing. So I'm intrigued to read this one. That was my December pick. And then January, I skipped the month. And then February, I picked three books. I know. So my February pick was The Golden Couple by Greer Hendricks and Sarah Pekinen. I only ever read An Anonymous Girl by this author, but I have um, The Wife Between Us. And that one's like very mixed reviews and the anonymous girl I was kind of like eh about so I figured I'd give them another shot here. I think this is about like a cheating wife and then she goes to a therapist who is like well known to like fix people in 10 visits or something like that and all these secrets are revealed. I don't know kind of sounds like it's going to be another eh thriller but we'll see. And my current book that I'm reading is The Maid by Nita Prose. I've been seeing this book everywhere. This isn't really a thriller. I would classify it more as like a cozy mystery. So we're following Molly the maid who finds a dead person in one of the hotel rooms that she's cleaning one day and that's about it. We're basically just following Molly and her life journey and she's just like so socially awkward and weird and I love it and I love her and I love this book so far so I'm almost halfway through obviously I'll give you my full update in my wrap up but I'm really fucking loving Molly so far and my heart is just like I can't take it. Next, this one is not a thriller, but I'm just going to throw it in here for shits and gigs. So this is A History of Wild Places by Shay Earnshaw. Now I see this book everywhere. Everyone's raving about it. I've heard like people that I like say that they don't like this book. I've heard people that I like give this five stars. So I'm curious to see where I fall. I think this is more of like a fantasy if I'm not mistaken. I don't even remember what this is about if I'm being completely honest. It has something to do with like people going missing. I honestly don't even know but I'm curious to find out and curious to see where I fall because like I said I've heard very mixed things. Next I'm so excited to read this book. It's They Never Learn by Lane Fargo. I have been so excited to read this. A little thing about me, a little fact, I 
was not like a super die hard fiction reader until about 2020. I started getting more into fiction reading and then 2021 I read like a shit ton of books. So between like 2020 and 2021 I was like home a lot. I had multiple surgeries. I had COVID. Like I was just home a lot and so I started reading more and more and I started reading more and more fiction. So a lot of popular books that like everyone else has read I still have not read. So I started like getting caught up and now this year I'm reading a lot of like popular books from 2021 because I still haven't read them and a mixture of like new releases so everyone has read this freaking book and loved it or most people and I'm so excited to read this I think it's just like about women who kill shitty men. I'm pretty sure it has to do with like revenge and my little Scorpio soul is just like <laughs> we love petty shit, we love revenge, us Scorpios are just like trash. Oh I can't wait for some drama and I'm like so excited to read this. And we have For Your Own Good by Samantha Downing which is her book that came out in 2021. I still have yet to read My Lovely Wife. Like I said, I'm freaking behind. This one is about like a college where there's like all these mysterious deaths on campus and the one professor's wife goes missing, I believe. And he's like a sketchy dude. And it's giving me like dark academia vibes. I've heard mixed things. Once again, I've heard mixed things about pretty much all of these books, so I'm curious to see where I stand. But yeah, I've been looking forward to reading this one since last year. And then I also have The Therapist by B.A. Paris. It is B.A. Paris's new release from 2021. This is like a couple that moves into this new neighborhood and the woman becomes like really friendly with the therapist that lived there and she's trying to piece together like some drama and stuff that happened. I honestly have no clue but I'm intrigued. Next I have this chunker. It's Night Film by Marisha Passell. Everyone has been raving about this book. I've seen this in so many best of 2021 videos. I'm intrigued. So this I believe is about a woman that is murdered. I guess investigators find this woman's father who is the producer. He's like a cult horror film producer and they begin digging into his life and secrets and I don't really know much about this book but I posted a picture of it on Instagram on my story when I got it and everyone was messaging me that this book is amazing and that I'm gonna love it and like look there's like little pictures in here I'm obsessed I don't know what they are but I'm intrigued and I'm super excited I think I'm gonna read this book for a vlog I think I'm gonna do a thriller vlog I've been doing so many horror vlogs lately so I think I'm gonna do like this one they never learn and maybe like two other books that I put in my last haul or maybe I'll do a flicker in the dark I don't know I'm gonna pick a couple books this is gonna be one of them and I think I'm gonna do like a popular thriller vlog and the one book that I have that's not thriller or horror let's just get it over with it's Golden Girl by Ellen Hildebrand I've seen this book literally everywhere and I actually got this out of like a free book library so I put a book in there and I took this one just to give it a go something different I think this is one of those books where someone dies and then she has like a chance to see her how her life would have been if she redid things something like that I don't even know it's like one of those types of books, something along those lines. So I've seen it done really poorly and I've seen it done really well. So we'll kind of see where this one falls. Um, doesn't sound like anything original, but it might be good. Next, we're going to move into horror. So 
my YA horror book that I have is White Smoke by Tiffany D. Jackson. I actually plan on reading this next. This is going to be a February read. And my good friend on here, Claudia, actually got me this book and sent it to me. So thank you so much. She is just like the sweetest person ever. She's mostly on Instagram and she also has this really cute Etsy shop where she makes um, bookmarks, which I'm going to show you in a second. This is like a haunted house book and I've heard nothing but great things about this book and I can't wait to read it. Um, so thank you so much, Claudia. You're the best. Um, let me show you her bookmarks because they are just like the sweetest, cutest things ever. So I actually purchased a few of these and then she just sent me like a whole freaking envelope full of bookmarks and I was like, holy shit. So if you know me, I'm obsessed with The Office. It's like my favorite freaking show ever. So I have <laughs> Dwight, You Ignorant Slut and Chili I'm reading with little tassels. I purchased these and then I also have a Prison Mike one. Those are the ones I purchased and then I also purchased Audrey Hepburn, um, Holly Golightly with Cat. So if you know me, I freaking love Audrey Hepburn. And then I have another Audrey Hepburn, Holly, with her cat. But then she sent me like a whole bunch of bookmarks. Like here's Jim Halpert. We have Michael Scott. We have another Jim. We have Pam. I also have a Dwight and a Kevin, but my boyfriend took those from me. <laughs> and I'm Evelyn Hugo. Like, hello, one of my favorite books of all time. Like, she sent to me so many. There's more, too, that I'm using as bookmarks. Just, like, the cutest things. So please go check her out. I'll leave her information linked down below. Um, next, I'm not sure if this is a YA book or an adult book or what this is, but it's Meddling Kids by Edgar Cantero. Um, someone told me to read this book, and I just bought it without even knowing what it's about. So I think it was... Um, it's like four teenagers that saw this like monster. It's like a creature feature. It's an amphibian monster terrorizing a quiet town. Um, and now like years later in their 20s, they are experiencing these issues and I think they get together to go back and like investigate again, something like that. Someone told me it's really good. I'm just blindly trusting them. So I picked this one up off of Pango Books for like three dollars. This is All's Well by Mona Awad. Now I purchased this book for one reason only. Um, the main character has chronic pain and I've seen so many reviews on this book, uh, mixed reviews, but so many reviews about how the main character's depictions of chronic pain and the representation of chronic pain pain is fantastic but these were all reviews by people who I don't believe um, suffer from chronic pain and I do so I wanted to read this for a vlog and kind of see how the representation is of chronic pain and chronic illness and see what's going on in this book here now all I know is that it's a woman suffering from like severe chronic pain and she's determined to put on Shakespeare's All's Well That Ends Well play. I really don't know. It's gonna get weird from what I hear. Like, I've never read Bunny by Mona Awad, which I've heard so many things about. Like, everyone has read that book and I never read it. So from what I know, she writes just like really weird freaking books. So I'm gonna see if I like her writing style in this book and I'm super excited to read this and read about someone with chronic pain because I feel like it's kind of a rare thing in fiction books like people that have real life issues you know so we're gonna check this one out together I plan on filming a vlog with this one also on a side note um thank you to everyone who has messaged me recently uh just kind of comforting me and letting me know that I'm not alone when it comes to my chronic pain issues. If you didn't know, I have a whole other YouTube channel where I filmed like in-depth videos about my pain. Like sitting right now filming this video is extremely painful and you'll never fucking know <laughs> unless I told you. Um, 
I was like curled up in fetal position all weekend with like horrible pelvic pain. I was debating on going to the ER. Like shit's been rough for me. And some of you guys are from my other YouTube channel. I haven't filmed videos on there in a while. I plan on filming on there eventually. But um, yeah, some of you guys are from that channel and some of you guys just know me from here, but you also have chronic pain issues and you were messaging me on Instagram. And I just want to say thank you so much to everyone who's reached out and we've kind of been like venting about our shit together. And I really, really appreciate it. So yeah, that's why I want to read this book. Next, I have two classic horror books that eventually I think I'm gonna do a vlog with these too. I have like a couple vlogs planned out with these books. And they are The Exorcist by William Peter Blady. Is that how you say his name? I think so. So classic horror book and then Rosemary's Baby. And if you didn't know, this is like one of my favorite movies of all time. I have a Rosemary's Baby shirt that I wear all the time. And I'm so, so excited to read these two books. Um, they've been on my TBR for like forever. So I'm so excited that I'm like physically holding them in my hands now. Then I picked up Near the Bone by Christina Henry. Everyone has been raving about this book for like forever. And like I said, there are so many popular books that I haven't read yet. This one's a creature feature and I'm so excited to get to this one because I've just, I've heard nothing but great things nonstop. And I have Kin by Keelan Patrick Burke. Now, if you don't know, if you've been here for a while, if you do know, Brother by Anya Alborn is like my all time favorite book ever. I'm obsessed. It's one of my all time favorite books ever. And from what I hear, someone told me that this is like a more crazy, more gory, graphic book than Brother, but it's kind of like the same thing. So I don't even know what this is about. I just bought it and I'm so excited to read it. But Brother is about a family of like murderous cannibals and it's kind of like down south like yeehaw go run them down with an axe like it's that kind of vibe and I think this one is similar it's kind of like Texas Chainsaw Massacre ish so super 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 excited and then I have two Stephen King books I have The Stand which is over a thousand fucking pages and I'm pissed off about it like I don't know if I'm gonna like this because I don't like long books so and I'm not like the biggest Stephen King fan ever so I might like break this up and just like read a hundred pages at a time like I don't even know what to do with this book but I've hear so many great things about it so I want to give it a try and then I have Dreamcatcher by Stephen King which is another big chunky book. This one's like only 700 pages. Like, come on, Stephen King. I don't have time for your shit. <laughs> I think this has aliens in it. I have no idea. I don't remember. And another book that everyone has been raving about. <laughs> um, I have seen nothing but good reviews about this one and it's The Troop by Nick Cutter. The only reason I haven't read this book yet is because I hear there is graphic violence towards cats and turtles. And if you know me, I have cats and a turtle or a tortoise, but I'm nervous. I'm nervous to read this book, but I've heard nothing but good things. This is about like a troop of scouts that are camping and some sinister shit starts happening. I don't even know and I don't want to know, but I'm like scared to read this book, but I I'm still excited to read it. Then we have The Last House on Needless Street by Catronia Ward. This one I hear flips between like three different perspectives, like a girl, a man, and a cat. And I don't know anything else about it other than everyone keeps raving about this book. And I've heard very mixed things about it. I read Sundial by Catronia Ward, which comes out in March, and I wasn't the biggest fan. So I'm I was kind of nervous to read this one, but we'll see how I feel. I feel better about this one than I do about Sundial because that one has like a lot of weird shit about dogs 
and I was just not a fan. So I feel like this one might be more up my alley. Next, I have Bird Box by Josh Mallerman. I saw the movie, but I never read the book. So I'm curious to see if I like his writing. I also have like one or two other books by Josh Mallerman. And I want to check his writing out because I really want to read Daphne which comes out in August and that's like his new release and it sounds really intriguing so I want to read a couple of his books see how I like them um, before I read his new one and this one's a chunky one this is No One Gets Out Alive by Adam Neville this one she's thick um, this is a Netflix show or movie and I've been super intrigued to read this book. Um, I believe it was Jordaline was um, talking about how much she likes this book and I've seen it mentioned by a couple people. So I definitely want to read this one and check out the movie. Let me know if you like this one, if you like the movie, if you recommend it, if you don't. I want to say this is about a haunted house, if I'm not mistaken. So if you like haunted house horror books, this might be up your alley. Then we have Slewfoot by Brahm. And look how beautiful this book is. This is just a gorgeous, gorgeous book. His artwork is just fantastic. Um, I read Krampus and I wasn't like obsessed with it, but it was good. And just like he is a beautiful artist. Um, he draws like the creepiest stuff and I just love it. So this one is about an ancient spirit awakening in a dark wood. Wild folk call him father, slayer, protector. Colonists call him slewfoot, demon, devil. To Abatha, a recently widowed outcast alone and vulnerable in her village, he is the only one she can turn to for help. Together they ignite a battle between Pagan and Puritan. So I'm intrigued by this one. Then I picked up Hex by Thomas Old... I, I'm not even going to pronounce his name. I'm going to butcher it. But Hex. I've seen this book recommended a few times. And also his new book just came out, Echo, in February. And I was curious to see if I wanted to pick that one up. I think that one's about like a gay couple something I don't remember but I wanted to pick this one up first to see if I wanted to read his new release because I hear a lot of good things about this one this one is about like a cursed town that is on lockdown or something I don't know it's like isolated creepy horror and then last but not least I have a whole oh, this is so heavy I have the whole collection of Lock and Key by um, Joe Hill. So I'm curious because this is a <laughs> this is a Netflix show, and I've been really wanting to read his graphic novels. So I read like part of the first one. I literally have a bookmark in here, um, but I never got around to finishing it because then I started doing something else or reading something else. But um, it's very intriguing and like dark. So I've been looking forward to getting around to reading these. I got like a really good deal on the whole set. So I was like, instead of paying $20 for each one, I bought the whole set said it's advertised as a dark fantasy like a horror fantasy so this is about a mansion with fantastic doors that transform all who dare to walk through them and home to hate filled and relentless creatures that will not rest until it forces open the most terror terrible door of them all I want to try to read these and watch the show so I do really like Joe Hill's writing so I feel like I'm gonna like these and that is it those are all the books that I've got recently, I'd say from November until now. So if you read any of these books and you enjoyed them, if you didn't enjoy them, whatever, let me know in the comments and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.